Welcome guys, I'm Gio here, hope you're having a great day. And in this video we talk about creation operators in RxJS. Some specific functions that help us to represent different things as observables. This is the code from our last video. And so far we have uh, covered the most basic uh, structure of this library and it's observable. Now at this point you should be able to represent anything is observable because within this function you can do anything you can make http calls you can set up websocket connections you can uh, add event listeners for different events like button clicks and so on and you can do anything but in a real application most of the time you don't have to write this from scratch there are functions in rxjs library that help us to create observable from different things. And in this video, we're gonna cover some of these functions because there are a lot, and we will see how they work. And you'll get a general sense of where and when to use these functions. Now, I'm not gonna cover every possible configuration and combination of these functions because they can be very flexible, and you can check the documentation for this. And uh, yeah, in this video, I'm going to cover the ones that I have used personally a lot and think that you will benefit as well. Before I cover these functions, let me get rid of this piece of code because it's not necessary anymore. First function I want to cover is Ajax function. And as you might already guessed, this function helps us to create observables that will make HTTP requests. So let me demonstrate that. And that's it. We have created observable that will make requests to this fake API. Now let's check the browser page. And as you see, nothing happens. If I refresh the page again, there is no request made. Why? Because, as I've mentioned before, this is observable and if we don't subscribe to it, then the logic, underlying observable logic, won't be executed. So it's just sitting there like a function. Now to execute this, let's subscribe to it. Let's check that. And as you see, we've got the API response. We can see the exact uh, response body that we've got. It's this object here. And um, if we look at the network tab, this request is made, as you see, and uh, it's working as expected. Now, this Ajax function can be complex. We can make different types of requests with different configuration options. We can provide request body and so on. But we're not gonna cover all of these details. You can check them in RxJS documentation. I think it's enough that you understand that these types of functions exist. That's important. And once you are aware of that, then you can check the details that suit your needs. Before we are on the requests, I want to demonstrate another point that I have said previously. If we subscribe to this observable again, second request will be made even though it seems that this is single observable. Let's uh, demonstrate that. Now let's refresh the page. And as you see, I have got two requests, two same requests, and I've got two logs here. This is because whenever someone is subscribed to observable, its underlying logic is executed for each subscription by default. Now there are some operators that alter this behavior and we will cover them of course in the future videos. But this is a point to remember, especially with the operations that require some computation or make some requests to external resources that are expensive. So we have to keep this in mind. Whenever we subscribe to Observable, it gets executed for each subscription. Another function I want to show you, creation operator, is from event that uh, helps us to create observables from different events on different elements. Let's do that. Oh, 
let's check that refresh the page click this button and it is working we have represented the click event as observable and we have received this log and the actual details of the click event and we can check that in event object that we receive here now in from event we specify the element that we want to listen this event on and in this case we have button it has id click me and then we specify what event we want to listen on a given element and it's as simple as that let's create observable from different event we have another element here it's a simple text and we can represent the input text that user types in as observable and it's uh, very easy let's do that let's check the result as I type in some text here we are getting the updates in the console and we have represented this text that user is typing into input as observable and it was very easy because we have used from event function and instead of click we have specified the input and this is how from event generally works let's check another creation operator uh, specifically off there are some times when we want to represent some values as observables and even though we can create observable from scratch there is a handy function for that to avoid this overhead of creating observable from scratch and it's called off let's uh, demonstrate that now if we check the subscription we will get one two and three let's refresh the page and as expected one two three we can pass in any type of value we want let's say my text and it's still going to work so as we pass in different arguments to this function uh, these values will be emitted by this observable that is created by off function and even though at this point you might think that it's useless there are some uh, special cases for example when we use some mapping operators when it's necessary to return uh, observable from a given value and that is very very useful another useful function that comes with RxJS is interval function and it's going to create observable that will emit numbers from 0 to infinity with given interval and sometimes that can be very useful for example when we want to check the status of different operations through HTTP request or perform some operation continually based on the given interval let's uh, check that as well let's check that and as you see we are receiving numbers 0 1 2 3 and so on and the interval is one second if I update this and let's say I put in 3 then this interval will obviously increase and match the 3 seconds and it is working so as I've said before uh, this can be used for the operations that we have to continually perform uh, usually to check some status uh, with HTTP request or do some computation and uh, I personally used it a lot in the past I want to conclude this video with another very useful uh, function it's called the from and as documentation says uh, it can receive anything like array array like promise promise like iterable and uh, it will transform this into observable and you can check this uh, all of the little details yourself but let's uh, demonstrate that as well and let's transform array into observable let's check that and as you see we have received one two and three and this uh, 
from function has transformed this array, this values of the array as observable, and each value was emitted by the given observable. When we have some promises inside our app, we can transform these promises as observables with from. And uh, let's quickly demonstrate that as well. Let's check that. And as you see, we have received another one, and that is from this log here. Let's comment this out and check only this section. And as you see, it's one. We have received it from promise. And inside the promise, you can have any logic you want, but the point is that with from function, we can transform from into observable and then apply all of the uh, functions of observables that we can. These are the functions I have used most of the time in my experience and they are very useful. Certainly there are other functions as well but you should definitely check them yourself. There's a really good documentation for them and RxJS page. This, this tutorial will give a sense that uh, these functions exist and you don't have to create observable from scratch unless it's absolutely necessary. When you have a case where you need observable out of something, first check these functions, check the documentation, and uh, there is a high chance that there will be a function to create observable from the thing you are trying to create. And if there is not, then you can, you know, obviously create a new observable with the observable constructor and uh, do anything there. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Click the like button, subscribe, and share it with your friends.